Greetings from Washington, D.C. This is Peter Thomas, the General Counsel of NAOP. Wanted to bring you up to date on some developments with respect to the VA program. Uh, there was a recent, a uh, couple weeks ago, meeting of the Prosthetics and Sensory AIDS Advisory Committee that meets on occasion, and they discussed the proposed VA rule that was issued last year. Um, and that, you know, that's the rule that uh, stated that the VA from here on in would be the sole authority for deciding whether a veteran has access to a, uh, a practitioner, which practitioner is selected for that veteran's care. Uh, for five decades, the VA has worked with community-based providers, uh, private practitioners with contracts with the VA to augment their prosthetic and orthotic capability across the country. And that partnership has worked quite well. Um, this rule would interrupt uh, that in a big way, and it would also deny veterans choice of practitioner, which is a really important quality assurance mechanism. And it's something that allows veterans to literally vote with their feet and to select another practitioner if that provider is not getting the job done from their perspective. So we, we considered, NAOP considered it, as well as the OMP Alliance considered this a very important regulation. We submitted significant comment. And uh, frankly, that proposed rule has languished for several months. Uh, the first we heard of any real traction was in uh, uh, July when the VA House su uh, Subcommittee on Health ha held a roundtable discussion where the VA was present, all of the veteran service organizations was, were present, uh, NAAOP was present, AOPA was present, uh, and ultimately there was a discussion about the proposed rule. Uh, we have strong bipartisan support to maintain veteran choice of, pro of provider uh, under this final rule. If it is issued, there was some question as to whether it would be rescinded or not. I can assure you at this point that it sounds as though the VA is continuing to work on the rule. They're examining the 300 comments they received and they will be publishing a final rule at some point in the future. Uh, they estimated it may take as long as, or perhaps even longer, about a year. Uh, and so uh, we continue to work to try to uh, impact the VA. We did get some uh, assurances that they'd be willing to meet with us to talk about the issue. Uh, and we will move forward with their a AOPA and the, uh, one of the VA officials were able to confirm that there would be a meeting in the near future to talk about this issue. So we'll keep you up to date as, we, as developments occur. Some of the other issues we learned about, um, as you know, the VA prosthetics benefit is extraordinarily broad. Uh, it's much broader than just limb prosthetics and orthotics. Uh, it includes uh, internal implants and seeing eye dogs and durable medical equipment. It's just a different benefit than the Medicare prosthetics benefit. And ultimately, um, uh, there is, are some specific rules that apply to prosthetics that to impact limb prosthetics and orthotics. First thing I should say is that the Mission Act, which is the really the reincarnation of the Choice Act, which allows veterans to gain access to private physicians and other therapists and other uh, primary care providers uh, without staying within the, within the VA system uh, if they uh, cannot get an appointment within a reasonable period of time or if the, the, their practitioners live too far away from their homes. Uh, that, has been, that program has been revamped and it passed earlier this year and was signed into law. The VA will have five major regulations to get off their desk uh, over the course of the next several months and into 2019. And there was some uh, discussion about how those take precedence over this prosthetics final rule. But I still believe that this prosthetics final rule will be issued uh, because the folks that are working on it are within the prosthetics division and they continue to, uh, to toil away. Um, the two points of information I wanted to quickly mention was that, number one, they, the VA has raised the threshold from $3,500 to $10,000, uh, which is the threshold for orthotics and prosthetics that would require that, um, the purchase of that care to go through the procurement uh, branch of the VA rather than being simply signed off by the local prosthetist and the prosthetics office. Uh, that increases the range of orthotics that will, custom orthotics primarily, that will be um, accessible under that streamlined uh, uh, system rather than going to through the pro procurement branch. But it probably won't have too big an impact on prosthetics, uh, simply because of the unit cost. 
Um, the other issue we wanted to mention was that the Mission Act is being used, and apparently uh, there are some uses for prosthetics and orthotics, mostly off-the-shelf orthotics, for the Mission Act bucket of funding. That's a different funding stream than regular prosthetics. And ultimately that allows um, emergent and uh, emergency uh, urgent care uh, to be provided under the Mission Act. So for instance, uh, splints and um, AFOs and kind of off-the-shelf orthotics that could be provided and should be provided, frankly, at the point of service where a veteran sees a private uh, physician or a practitioner on the outside. Those devices will be covered and continue to be covered under the Mission Act, whereas traditional O&P, most of the uh, custom O&P that uh, the field uh, performs will go through the regular process as always. So just wanted to clarify that because of the, uh, the passage of that massive law. Thanks so much. We'll keep you in touch.